All right, so we need to look at the idea of defending against bad code. Because unfortunately, we can't guarantee that we, the, um, our, our programmer, are always going to type the right thing. Nor can we also pr uh, guarantee that someone else is going to type in the wrong thing. So we have to pr practice, excuse me, defensive coding or defense against the bad input. So we have right here in our code already, we have this int age string temp age equals my pop-ups get answer, where we're grabbing the information from the user and trying to force it into an int when we call the integer.parse int. And this, this would be great if we could guarantee that users only typed in numbers. But when dealing with the Java GUI, the Java GUI can only accept string responses. So we have to make sure we actually grab a string. So we have to actually make a method that can check for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down below this method. We're making a new helper method. And so helper methods, because they are only for the class, they're generally going to be private. This one specifically is for that. And so it's going to be a private. It's a Boolean method. And I'm going to call it is integer. And it takes a string as a parameter. And we'll just call it input because that's what it is. And since we're making a method that has a return type, we want to make sure that the first thing we do is we write immediately a variable for the default value of the method and a return statement for that. So our first line of the, me of the method will be a variable declaration of type boolean. So boolean, and I'm going to call it isInt, and set it to the default value of false. My last line of code for my method is going to be a ver um, the return statement for that method. So return is int. At this point, my method is completely compilable. It totally works. It's just fine. All it's going to do is if I call this method, it will return false. Totally valid method. Not helpful, but valid. But what we need to do is we need to actually defend against per typing in the wrong inputs. So we need to make sure that something doesn't cause a problem. So what we need to do is we have to actually try some code. And so this is how we're going to make sure that the user doesn't screw up um, what they type in, doesn't cause the program to crash. Instead, the program will simply force something else to happen. So when we want to try something, we have a tool in Java called the try statement. And it goes try, and then some squiggles. And inside the squiggles is what we are going to try and do. And so I'm going to try and see if I can turn the input into an integer. So I'll say that int age equals, and then, or Actually, let's do int valid integer equals, and then I'll do integer dot parse int. And the integer dot parse int method right here that I'm doing will try and take that input and turn it into an integer. If it is a valid uh, parsing, if it can actually convert that to an integer, that's just fine. And so if that, if that does work, I want to set isInt equal to true, because it worked. But if that doesn't work, if it crashes it, Java has a way of catching that. It'll actually stop the crash before it happens, because it looks for it. It's going to say, oh, because I'm trying this, I don't know if it's going to happen. This would be great if we, if we actually you know, prevent car accidents by trying something, and if, it, if it's about to cause a crash, we just stop and reverse. But you know, that doesn't quite happen in real life. So what I do is I do catch, and I do a set of parens, and I pass it a number format exception, because that was the error that we saw when, we, when it crashed earlier. And I just call error. And so if, I, if it won't work to do this, I'm going to catch the error, and I'm going to tell the user that it didn't work. So I'm going to just do a my pop-ups. dot display response and I'm going to tell them you did not type in a valid integer frowny face so it's just going to do that um, they didn't work so if it is a valid integer isn't will be true and I will return isn't if when they try and parse that integer and it's not a valid integer isn't never gets to true because it crashes right here. That crash gets caught by this line of code. And isn't is still set for false. And so it will return false. So this method will only work if and only if, it will return true if and only if, excuse me, I type in a variable, that can, a value 
that can be turned into an integer variable. So if I type in the word George, it can't parse it. It will return false. If I type in the number four, that can be parsed. It will return true. So let's test that out. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to our start method. And to test it, I'm going to go right here. And I have my int age defined. And then if parens squiggles, and then I call is integer, and I pass it temp age. So if the is integer method passing it temp age returns true. So if it does work, I'm going to say that age equals integer.parsent and pass it temp age. So that line of code I have right here, I've already, I just copied it over. I'm then going to delete that line of code. I'm going to go up here and type in else. And if it doesn't work, if they typed in something that's not valid, like they typed in, say for example, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, trademark of course by Disney, we'll say that age equals, and a good invalid age, no one can be this, is negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No one can be negative years old. Doesn't work. So that's a great invalid age. So it'll give them an error message saying that they couldn't do it. And then on top of it, it'll say the age is going to be this invalid number. So I have in that new method right here where I call that is integer called temp age. If it works, I assign that age variable to it. If it doesn't work, I assign in an, another invalid value, but one that will not cause my program to crash. So let's test that out. Hit the play button, and we're going to step through this and look at what happens as we go through this. Because I have all my, my code running out here, we can see what happens. So I'm at this point right here inside my start method, and it says string name equals my popups dot get answer passing type in your name. So that means I would go to my display class, and in my display class I have my get answer method. It takes a string as a parameter and returns a string, and it uses the show input dialog to uh, prompt the user for input. If it uh, then grabs that answer and returns it. So I go to that and I say, it says type in your name. And so I type in, in this case, Cody. And I say, okay. So that's where I'm at, at this point when I press the okay button, it's gonna grab what I typed in and put it into answer and then return it back to who called me. So I press okay. You typed in Cody, which means I went over to back to my controller class and it said my pop-ups dot display response and I, my, you typed in Cody. So I went from one class, grabbed that answer, it returned it and stored it inside name and displayed it right here. My next line of code will be int age where I'm saving, so I'm gonna say I declare a variable called age. I'm then it asks you to type in your age. So I go back over to that, I press okay. Hey, type in your age. If I type in an invalid response, it will cr not crash my system. So I type in, say for example, funny. Funny is not a number. I press OK. You did not type in a valid integer. Frowny face. It doesn't crash my thing. It goes on to my next set of instructions. You typed in, and then that invalid response that I want it to say because it failed this test. So is integer, I typed in funny. Funny does not pass this test. It went down here to is integer. I passed in funny. I said isn't is false. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try int valid integer equals integer.parse int passing it funny. That crashes right here. So it skips out of this, never hits this line, and it did that pop-up saying you did not type in the valid integer, and then returned false. Because it returned false, I come up here to my if test. I don't pass my test, so I go to my else. I set age then to be equal to be negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I say my pop-ups.display response, and you typed in that invalid age. I hit OK. I'm now at my wait thing. I type in a valid number. And you typed in 12.3 OK. But if I type in an invalid number, it'll cause it to crash again. So let's take a look at this again really fast. What I want us to do right now is we're going to make the exact same method we just did for the is integer, but we're going to make it one that can test for a double. So making sure we're following along exactly with me. So look at my screen. Type this on your own as well. And so we're going to go right here, right below is integer. We're going to make a copy of that method. We're going to call it is double. 
So right below is integer inside my class still. So the question was, where am I doing this? I'm going to do this inside my pop-up controller class. Right below my method, private boolean is integer. I'll make an exact copy of this method, but instead of using integer, I'm going to change it all to double. I want you to type it, not copy-paste. So we do private boolean, and it's is double because I'm replacing integer every time with the word double. It takes a string as a parameter. I'm calling it input because, again, it reflects what it is and what it does. The first line of my method is I declare a variable of that type and assign it a value. It's a Boolean variable. It's, the name would be is double because it's going to check to see if it's a double. And I set it to the default value of false. My last line of, for that method is going to be the same thing, return is double. Just like in that previous method where I first declared the variable is int equals false and return is int, because this is a Boolean method, the first thing I do is I declare a variable of the type, I assign it to the default value for that method, and then I return that variable. So right now my method is completely runnable. I want to make sure you're typing this as well. So I've, I've just copied that, then I'm going to type the exact same thing line for line that I just wrote up here, but changing instead of int, I'll replace it with double. I'm going to do try, enter, squiggles, inside my try, double, valid, double, equals, double, with a capital D, dot parse double, and then I pass it input as a parameter. And then is double, which is inside here, because I'm using double right here, equals true. So if it works, if I can parse the double, I'm going to change my variable name is double, its value, to be true. If it crashes, I need to catch that crash. I need to catch the exception. So I do catch, parens, and it's a number format exception. And it's an error, so I'm just going to call it error. And I give it some squiggles. I'm going to scroll back down. And so in my catch, I'm going to put in the same thing. My popups dot display response, and I pass it. Instead of you did not type in a valid integer, I will say you did not type in a valid double. And close that line with a semicolon. So this method is exactly the same as my previous method. If I maximize my screen a bit here and make it so you can see both at once. As you can see, my two methods right here, my private boolean is integer and my private boolean is double, the methods look exactly the same other than I'm changing it from an int to a double all the way through. They are private because they're helper methods. They're only going to be seen inside this class. So I have that saved. And now I'm going to go back up and I'm going to do that same test I did on the double section to make sure that my code doesn't crash when I try and type in a double variable. I did that with double where I had, I had to t test to see if it would work and then else it. I'm going to go over here to double and I'm going to do if and then the method name was, is double, and I pass it the prompt of the temp weight. So I need to move this line up here before the if. So string temp weight equals my popups dot get answer, type in your weight. So again, that will go over and grab it and store it as a string because the display uh, method for get answer and the J option pane only takes strings for return types or only allow strings for return types. So I'm going to see if that returns true, I'll do that. If it doesn't return true, I'll give it a value that's not good. So I'll say wait equals double dot parse double and I pass it temp wait. Wait equals and you can't have negative weight either. You can't have negative age. Weight equals negative point nine 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 zero zero um, zero 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 one. Clearly, an impossible weight to have. We can't have things that weigh less than zero. If you have mass, you have a weight. And so I'll take out this line of code right here. because I've already put it in inside my if. 
So just like what I did up here with the integer one, I declared an int of age and a string for temp age. And I grab that prompt and test it. I declare a double for weight, a string for a temp, and test it. And now I could do this, and I could display the information from my thing when I check it out. So let's play it and try and type in invalid numbers and see how it works. I typed in derf. Age. If I type in an invalid number, we already know that that one works. So we'll type in a valid number this time. You typed in 1232. I have an age. I'm really old, but that's okay. And now if I type in a weight, I can go ahead and type in, say, 3.1415. I'll weigh pi. You typed in 3.1415. My program then completes and runs. Because that's all it has to do. So we can do defensive programming. Defensive programming happens. We defend against bad input by using a combination of if tests and a method that can verify if it can be parsed. We have to use this new code of a try catch. The try attempts the code. The catch deals with what happens when it crashes. So this is something we'll be using on any time we have to deal with user input. So in any project that has to do with user input, we will have to verify that numbers are valid, that doubles are valid. And so we'll have to make methods just like this anytime we have to deal with user input. And so, because the user input will only take in a string, so we have to convert those strings into, um, into values. And we do that by checking to make sure it works so it doesn't break our program. If you wish to continue prompting the user for that, we will be addressing that next week in our next video. We want to prompt the user for information. We're using a pop-up string system using uh, JOption pane. We type in what they ask for. If it passes the test, we assign the value. If it fails a test, we assign a bad value so we know that it's the incorrect value within the project. We do the same thing on the weight since that also requires a conversion. We check to make sure it will work. If it does work, we pass it. If it doesn't work, we give it a different invalid answer. And then we're able to create our project and keep on moving on.